Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another day of a year in miracles. And today we are on A Course in Miracles workbook lesson number 71. So I'm going to start right in. Today's lesson is only God's plan for salvation will work. And remember, we can substitute the word God for whatever is comfortable for you. So if you would rather use the word love, you could say only love's plan for salvation would, will work or only the universe's plan for salvation will work. So again, use the word that is comfortable for you that represents the one uh, mind, the source that we all share. So let me, uh, let me start in. Only God's plan for salvation will work. You may not realize <clears throat> that the ego has set up a plan for salvation, an opposition to God's. It is this plan in which you believe. Since it is the opposite of God's, you also believe that to accept God's plan in place of the ego is to be damned. This sounds preposterous, of course. Yet after we have considered just what the ego's plan is, perhaps you will realize that however preposterous it may be, you do believe it. The ego's plan for salvation centers around holding grievances. It maintains that if someone else spoke or acted differently, if some external circumstance or event were changed, you would be saved. Thus, the source of salvation is constantly perceived as outside yourself. Each grievance you hold is a declaration and, and an assertion in which you believe that says, if this were different, I would be saved. In other words, if I had that job, my life would be so much better. If I had a better relationship, my life would be so much better. Once I have enough money, my life will be so much better. The change of mind is necessary for salvation, is thus demanded of everyone and everything except yourself. The role assigned to your own plan, to your own mind in this plan then, is simply to determine what, other than itself, must change if you are to be saved. According to this insane plan, any perceived source of salvation is acceptable, provided that it will not work. This ensures that the fruitless search will continue, for the illusion persists that although this hope has always failed, there is still grounds for hope in other places and in other things. Another person will yet serve better. Another situ situation will yet offer success such as the ego's plan for your salvation. Surely you can see how it is in strict accord with the ego's basic doctrine, seek but do not find. For what could be more surely guaranteed that you will not find salvation than to channelize all your efforts in searching for it where it is not? God's plan for salvation works simply because by following his direction, you seek for salvation where it is. But if you are to succeed, as God promises, you will. You must be willing to seek there only. Otherwise, your purpose is divided and you will attempt to follow two plans for salvation that are diametrically opposed in all ways. The result can only bring confusion, misery, and a deep sense of failure and despair. How can you escape all this? Very simply. The idea for today is the answer. Only God's plan for salvation will work. There can be no real conflict about this because there is no possible alternative to God's plan that will save you. His is the only plan that is certain in its outcome. His is the only plan that must succeed. Let us practice recognizing this certainty today. And let us rejoice that there is an answer to what seems to be a conflict with no resolution possible. All things are possible to God. Salvation must be yours because of his plan, which cannot fail. 
Begin the two longer practice periods today by thinking about today's idea and realizing that it contains two parts, each making equal contribution to the whole. God's plan for your salvation will work and other plans will not. Do not allow yourself to become depressed or angry at the second part. It is inherent in the first. And if the first is your full release from all your own insane attempts and mad proposals to free yourself. They have led to depression and anger, but God's plan will succeed. It will lead to release and joy. Remembering this, let us devote the remainder of the extended practice periods by asking God to reveal his plan to us. Ask him very specifically, what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say and to whom? Give him full charge of the rest of the practice period and let him tell you what needs to be done by you in his plan for your salvation. He will answer in proportion to your willingness to hear his voice. Refuse not to hear. The very fact that you are doing the exercises proves that you have some willingness to listen. This is enough to establish your claim to God's answer. In the shorter practice periods, tell yourself often that God's plan for salvation and only his will work. Be alert to all temptation to hold grievances today and respond to them with this form of today's idea. Holding grievances is the opposite of God's plan for salvation, and only his plan will work. Try to remember today's idea some six or seven times an hour. That's a lot. There could be no better way to spend a half minute or less than to remember the source of your salvation and to see it where it is. And that's it. That is today's workbook lesson number 71. And I remember when I did this lesson, <clears throat> and I've done these lessons several times, um, I remember I changed the word God to the word love. And, um, and it really made a big difference to me uh, when I first started doing this because I, I was not comfortable with the word God because honestly, I didn't know what God was. I always thought it was something outside of me. So in order to feel that it was something inside of me, I changed the word to love and it, and it seemed to work much better for me. Um, and I'll just, uh, I'll just kind of explain uh, how that worked for me. So when you say, remembering this, let us devote the remainder of the extended practice periods to asking love to reveal its plan to us. Ask love very specifically, what would, what would love have me do? What, where would love have me go? What would love have me say and to whom? And in that way, you know that you're always connected to choosing love instead of fear. And we know that God is love. So there's no reason why we can't change that word love for God if it's more comfortable for you. If you're comfortable with the word God and you're embracing that you are connected and in that one place with God, then awesome. Go ahead and use that word. Use whatever word works best for you. If it's the universe, if it's source. Um, but again, it's a really powerful lesson and I would love for you to be able to really embrace it and understand the power of it. There's a lot of power in letting go and allowing the universe to just show up exactly as it should. I mean, you're basically saying, what would the universe have me do? Where would the universe have me go? What would the universe have me say and to whom? And then give it full charge of the rest of the practice period and let the universe tell you what it needs to be done by you for the universe's plan for your salvation because the universe always has your back. God always has your back. Love always has your back. You just have to learn to let go and stop listening to the ego that's always full of fear and always terrified and always trying to tell you that um, you, knew, you need to choose fear instead of love. So that's it. Today's lesson, workbook lesson 71. And thank you everyone for joining this morning. Let's see who is on the live feed. Hi, honey. Thanks for showing up this morning and watching on the live feed. Good morning, Cindy. Nice to see you here. 
Hey Francine, great to see you here this morning. Good morning, Barb. Hey Michael, good to see you. Hey Alberto, nice to see you this morning. Marcella is here this morning. Good morning, Marcella. Hey Carl, good to see you. Hi Allison, good to see you here. Oh my goodness, uh, Gunshayam, I hope I pronounced your name right. So, thank you so much for watching this morning. Good morning, David, good to see you here. Uh, yes, it's a great lesson, isn't it? Uh, Sivaram Prasad, nice to see you here. I hope I pronounced your name right. Uh, good morning, Lori, good to see you. Hey, Sunil, nice to see you here this morning. Good morning, William. Great to see everybody. Hey, Sandy, nice to see you on the live feed this morning. Good morning, Felix. Good to see you. Yes. Happy day, everyone. Good morning, Cindy. Great to see you. Yeah, loving this, right? Aren't these lessons awesome? Hi, my sissy. Oh, my sister's watching. She's probably driving to work this morning. I hope you're keeping your eyes on the road, too. I love you so much. Good morning, Kyle. Good to see you. Yeah, keep on trucking. I know. Keep on trucking Tuesday. That's a good one. Uh, great to see you, Colette and Gerardo. Nice to see you. Nice to see all of you guys. Marcello, yeah, good vibrations. So, yeah, let's um, see what this lesson does for us today. What would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say and to whom? And, you know, let it go. We don't need to take on all of that stress and anxiety of having to know the answer all the time because we have someone with us that knows the answer all the time. Um, so allow that presence to come in and, and just kind of be there for you and allowing you to show up in your full power and being love. And they'll tell, you know, love will tell you where to go and what to do and what to say and to whom. So you don't have to worry about it. So that's our lesson today. Thank you everyone for showing up and I will see you again tomorrow with our next lesson. And again, if you'd like to dive deeper, Please join us in our private Facebook group where we go deeper into these lessons and we talk about what's coming up for us. All right, have a great day and I'll talk to you tomorrow morning. Thanks guys, bye.